In this video, I'll be showing you how to use tables in your snippets. Tables are great for presenting your snippets in a structured way. You can fill them with static information like this, or you can go all out and use them with text based formulas, commands, and dynamic logic. If you're familiar with spreadsheet apps or tables in word processors, you'll feel right at home with snippet tables. Creating a table takes just a few clicks. You can change its appearance by clicking inside one of the cells. The row that shows up at the top does not hold any data. It is used for adjusting the width and position of the columns in the table by clicking and dragging with the left mouse button. Clicking the right mouse button opens up a pop-up menu for adding or removing columns and rows, as well as changing other features of the table. Note that deleting a row or column will delete its contents. I can also format the contents of my cells by using the formatting options in my snippet editor. And if I left-click and drag, I can select multiple cells to format. Here are some other things you can do using the right-click pop-up menu. Let's have a look at how you can use commands, formulas and dynamic logic in tables. This is a simple pricing sheet. I've used the table formatting options to remove the borders around the item names and column headings. In the price column, I have a text field in each row and each text field has a unique name. In the column for price including tax, I have my formulas. In the top two rows, I'm multiplying the value of the form variable by 1.18 to get the price plus 18% tax. Let's build the third formula together. With the target cell highlighted, I'm going to look up the formula command from the sidebar. I click on the form variable name I need and complete my formula. Additionally, I can choose how the result is formatted. For the purpose of illustration, I've set the formula in the second row to produce a number with two decimal places, while the first and third row will produce a currency format. Of course, this is all optional, so feel free to experiment. Let's try it out. Notice how the results are updated to reflect the numbers I insert in the text fields. You can learn more about formulas on the help site. In this next example, I want to set up the bottom row so that it only shows up when I want it to. First, I'm going to add a toggle command and give it a name. This will be the condition that determines whether the row will appear or not. Next, I right-click inside the row I want to affect and use the pop-up menu to add my dynamic logic. Here, I'm instructing TextBlaze that when my toggle is on, I want my row to show up. In simple terms, we're asking, is the toggle command on? If the answer is yes, make the row visible. If any of this is new to you, the help site has a detailed guide on how to use conditional logic in your snippets. Let's try it out. Here's one more example from the help site. You can experiment with these dynamic snippets directly on the site or even copy them to your dashboard with a few clicks to use as building blocks for your own snippets. Your snippet tables can also integrate with DataBlaze, the free companion app to TextBlaze. Here's a simple example. This is a DataBlaze table with a list of randomly generated fake identities. First, I need to connect this table to a snippet. This is one way to do it, but you can read more about how to work with DataBlaze on our help site. This command reads from my DataBlaze table and dynamically inserts the information into my snippet. I'm going to give it a name so that I can reuse its contents elsewhere in my snippet. This toggle is used to present the data as a drop-down menu. I don't need it for this example, so I'm turning it off. And I'm going to enable the multiple setting so that the command brings in all of the rows from my database table. Now that my command is set up, 
I can use it to create a snippet table with just a few clicks. Notice how my table only has a header row and a single content row. We'll get to that in a moment. One final touch, let's change our shortcut to something simpler. Time to try it out. As you can see, my snippet table contains all of the data from my database table. That's because when I created the table earlier, TextBlaze automatically added a repeat command, which will create a number of rows equivalent to the number of entries I have in my database table. This functionality is explained in much more detail on the help site, with plenty of examples on how to use it in your own snippets. Let's see what happens when I add more entries in database. Once again, the repeat command has created enough rows to accommodate the data. I can also set up my command to only insert the rows that fulfill a specific condition. I've added a column to my database table and set up a new connected snippet in my TextBlaze dashboard. The settings are similar to the ones in the previous example. However, this time I'm adding a setting that tells TextBlaze to only bring in those rows that obey this condition. And this is what happens when I insert my snippet. There's a lot more you can do with snippet tables, especially if you combine them with the power of TextBlaze commands and database spaces. Make sure you check the guide to get a solid start and dive into the community to explore all the cool ideas shared by other users like yourself.